Okay, so those are our terms. We got those out of the way. Now, so we want to sort of shift gears based after we establish these terms. I want to shift gears to a different idea of development. And this is the following. Some animals, some animals, and this may seem random right now, but bear with me. Some animals develop directly into adults. Develop directly into adults. And you might be wondering, well, what does that mean? What does it mean to be a direct uh, transformation into adult? Uh, and it's actually a lot simpler than you think it is. It's actually a good example would be uh, a human, like you and I, right? Um, what does this mean? This basically means that when we are born as a child, as a young infant, we always stay in the human level. We always are a human. You've never questioned the fact that a baby is, is that baby even human? There are characteristics that keep that baby a human in your mind. And the reason why is because that infant, that child, will develop into a toddler, that toddler will develop into an adolescent, and that adolescent will develop into adult. There was no change in any point of those stages from human to something that's less human, okay? No matter how the person looks. You always know that somebody is human, right? This is not always the case in all animals. It's not as direct as going from young to adult. There's a bit of an indirect nature with other animals, and that can be seen in things that undergo metamorphosis, okay? So other animals, other animals, not humans, okay? Other animals with at least one, what we would call larval stage. And this is a big characteristic of these animals, the fact that they have a stage in which they do not resemble the adult, and I'll explain what that means, what that encompasses right now. So, other animals with at least one larval stage. Humans don't have this, okay? What is larva, or what are larvae? Let's explain. So, larvae, which is the plural of larva, is equal to a sexually immature form of an organism. Sexually immature Form. That's a very broad definition, okay? But specifically, in this sexually immature form, the key characteristic is that it is in a such a sexually immature form, it's actually morphologically, and we know what morph means, right? It refers to shape. Morphologically, its shape is incredibly different from the adult. Morphologically different from adult. Its entire structure looks quite different from the adult. In the idea of an infant versus an adult, you know that that infant, you know, has five fingers, two eyes, a face, two legs, for the most part, in almost all situations. And thus, you know that that thing will turn into an adult and is a human indeed. But in this idea of a larval stage and larvae, you don't know because they're so morphologically different from the adult and they're sexually immature that they are actually unknown in some other form. They look like something that's totally different. Not only do they look like something that's totally different, they actually act like they're something totally different because larvae often eat different foods and even live in different habitats. Live in different habitats as compared to their adult counterparts. Eventually, they're going to develop into an adult, but at their larval stage, they might eat different foods or live in different habitats and definitely look different than the adult. So there's clearly a distinction between some animals and other animals here that I hope you can focus on. Now, how does this eventually turn into adult? Because everything eventually does do this. Well, you undergo something known as metamorphosis. I mentioned it in very briefly, the idea of metamorphosis. So think of this as a shape change. Morph meaning shape, and osis, you could say, is like a process, okay, in which we're going to undergo a process that's going to change our shape. Now, in, the, in order for this to happen, we undergo some developmental procedures, so DEV over this arrow, which just means that development happens, and you turn into something known as a juvenile. You go from a larval stage to a juvenile stage. At this point, you are still not an adult. You're still sexually immature, actually, and we'll write that down. Still sexually immature. You're getting closer to looking like an adult. You're getting closer to acting like the adult form of this uh, animal, but you're not. And then finally, you turn into an adult with some further development. The classic example everybody uses for this is you cannot tell 
there's no way that you could, if you didn't know about it initially, the fact that a caterpillar will eventually turn into a butterfly, right? A caterpillar is simply the larval stage, and it eventually turns into a completely different looking, completely different acting thing known as a butterfly. Okay, so that's a, a big idea here between some animals versus other animals. This is mainly on the insect side of the animal world. So now, in addition, we also have to look at the idea of regulation. Okay, and This is a topic that often gets overlooked. It's a topic that often doesn't get uh, put enough attention to because it's very difficult to understand how all of this happens. How does the development process of a gastrula and gastrulation and blastula and all of this, how does it happen? It's all regulated, and it's all highly regulated, I should say, by something that you should be familiar with, which is gene expression. Okay, back to bio one. Cannot forget bio one. Okay, what is gene expression? Summary of gene expression, you have DNA, genes, you have to express them. How do you express, express them? You have to transcribe them, you have to translate them, you get a protein, a protein does a job. Some proteins are specifically developed, are specifically here within us for developmental processes like all of these things we talked about, okay? So that's basic gene expression 101. The one that's of focus to you that you need to know about are homeobox genes. These are directly related to development. They are regulatory developmental genes, homeobox genes. Remember that name. Now, what do they do specifically? Their specific job is to code for proteins, just like I said, right? Gene expression is the idea of coding for proteins. They code for proteins that regulate expression of developmental genes, okay? That regulate expression, EXP for expression of DEV for developmental genes. So there are going to be some genes that are within the genome of you and I that are there initially just for development. Now, they're going to be turned on, those developmental genes, if certain proteins tell them to turn on, okay? Proteins interact with genes all the time, okay? Think DNA polymerase, right? It's constantly acting with DNA. Same thing with homeobox genes. Homeobox genes will make these proteins that interact with the specific genes devoted to development. And they will basically talk to those developmental genes and say, hey, you should turn on, you should turn off, etc. It's highly regulated in that sense. The idea that proteins are regulating the expression of genes that tell us whether or not development should happen or should or should not happen. Okay? So those are homeobox genes. A, a sub-example of homeobox genes would be Hox genes. Okay? Hox genes. Remember that? These are just genes that are uh, very important. All you need to know is that these are genes important in animal embryo development. So if you were asked a question, why didn't this animal embryo develop correctly, you could say that it could have been a faulty regulation of gene expression of the homeobox genes. Specifically, maybe the Hox genes had a mutation within them that did not allow for proper embryonic development. Okay? So development is a big, another defining characteristic of an animal. Go back to the first question I asked, first theme that I asked about this lecture. What makes animals unique? Why are we complex? Why are we different than other things? Part of it was in Animal Characteristics 1, which we went over, and the other part of it is this right here, the idea of our complex development and very, very regulated development also. Now, final thing here, uh, just the idea of evolution in terms of our development, how did our development evolve. Just take a look at figure 32.3. It shows our uh, development from an ancestral protist, the coanoflagellate, a flagellated protist, and mentions the idea of evolutionary development that underwent, that animals underwent throughout our phylogeny, our evolutionary history. Just take a look at figure 32.3. That summarizes it very well. Okay, so these are our animal characteristics, and that concludes our understanding of such characteristics.